Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rao. And this week, I'm going to feature a build here of a 2010 Shelby GT500. Now, this is the second generation of the Mustang after its retro vibe had hit. The 05s had come out, and uh, Shelby started modifying the GTs in 05, mostly 06 and 07, really. But they did do some 05s. And, but those are produced by Shelby themselves up in Vegas. And then in 07, Ford started to produce their own uh, Shelby GT500, which that was actually produced through SVT. And uh, so there are post-title Shelbys and pre-title Shelbys. So and then there's quite a bit of difference between the two as far as what's been done and, you know, how it was built and, you know, the level of performance. So you can order your Shelby through the Ford dealer and you can get uh, Ford's offering. And then you could take it to Shelby and have it modified or tweaked even further. And for 2010, this was really no different as well because they were doing that with these. This is uh, as you would have ordered it from Ford and taken it out and enjoyed it. And this wasn't too far different from some of the previous models. Now for 2008 and 2009, they had the GT500KR. That one was a bit hopped up a little more. It was 540 horse, 5.4 liter motor. And this shared that same drivetrain. It had pretty much the same 540 horsepower and the same motor and just a few little tweaks done to it. And this was supposed to be faster than the previous model, but there's a lot of uh, tests that don't say that or don't um, go along with that. But one of the things they did was they took out the 331 gears that were in the back and put in 355s, help it get off the line a little bit better and help the acceleration a little bit. But to also help the fuel economy, the six-speed manual transmission, they redid the fifth and sixth gears overdrive to help for fuel economy. So this thing did get uh, two miles per gallon better fuel economy on the highway than it did the previous years, and which also helped drop its gas guzzler cat tax from $1,300 to just $1,000 when you bought these new. So with that, you were supposed to get, uh, Ford was claiming a quarter mile times of 123 and uh, that's what Ford was claiming. But a lot of the magazines and, and that were testing it, Road and Track and Motor Trend, they were getting like 12.7 and 12.9, and they were not able to beat the KR from the previous year. So they were uh, having a little trouble with that. And some of the testing was going along with that. And they were saying it really wasn't much faster. It was a little bit cheaper than the KR, but it wasn't much faster or, or faster at all. But it definitely looked good with all the revamped bodywork and all the changes done to the outside of it. Now, the, what I thought was kind of interesting is the stripes were painted on and they were hand painted and they were very careful on it. But uh, if you wanted the stripes to lead, there was no credit for it. So, you know, why not uh, spend Ford's money and get the stripes and, you know, that you wanted? But uh, if you didn't want the stripes, there was no credit for it. And you saved Ford some money, but they didn't give you any extra credit for doing that so uh just love the way these things look and and i love the headlights on these things they just uh really like the way that they are and the a little bit aggressive front end but they got a little bit better like this one's a 2010 and then you know like not too fond of these particular taillights they're pretty cool but i like the taillights that came a little later but it's a it's a good looking car with some serious performance but it only got better from here so when it comes to the 2010s, 11s, a um, little bit forgotten today, you know, the performance is there, but they tweaked a little bit in 2011. They got 10 more horsepower of it and a few more tweaks on it, but uh, you know, some other changes here and there. But I always think these are really cool, but you know, they are, you know, right from Ford, which if you look at the early Shelby's, the same thing. The, 65, 66, and 67s were built by Shelby. The 68 through 70 Shelbys were actually built by Ford in Michigan. So, you know, it shares some of that too. So it's really not a new thing. Now, when it comes to these Ravel Shelby Mustangs, I really enjoy them. And for me, when it comes to a, a Shelby in scale model kit form, I want to have it. And I'm such a fan, I go and buy them and I look for them. 
And this one is no different. Um, went out and got it when it first came out and I was really excited. And I built this one. This one's box stock right out of the box. I didn't do anything to it. Decals are right from them. And uh, did the wheels in more of a graphite instead of a black, um, which uh, looked pretty good. Now, these things suffer a little bit of a ride height thing. They could be lower just a little bit. But this one, I didn't think looked too bad. I got some cleaning up to do in the quarter panel there. Didn't notice that before, but it looks like it'll wipe right off. But anyway, um, really enjoyed building these. And like I mentioned, I've actually got a few of them and I don't have any more. Almost uh, keep my eye open. If I find another one at a swap meet at a really good price, I'll probably pick it up. Even though I really don't know what I would end up doing with it at that point. But really enjoyed building this. And like I said, I built it right out of the box. And they're really easy to build. And they just look really nice. The motors in there, the air filter, and everything. Just really enjoy doing these. And they're just so much fun. Even though this one's a little bit dusty. Needs a little bit of a cleanup. But, uh, you know, this one did it right like that. And I didn't do anything to it. But I did show you the convertible one that I built by combining the 10K with the convertible kit so I can have the convertible. And I, I've showed you this one. There's a full video on this one. So I made that one on 11 and that one on 10 by just doing some of the little things that were needed to be done to make it. But just uh, um, wonderful kits. And I hope to see more of them if uh, Ravel gets more of them out. Haven't seen any. Just uh, the resin conversion kits for the latest ones. So it's uh, kind of disappointing that some of the newest kits or newest cars we're really not seeing in kit form. But, you know, these are a lot of fun. And even that uh, at one point in time, and I don't know if you can still get this. Plamos had uh, a conversion kit for it too. So I built this one as well and started as a 2010. But this one is now a... Uh, um, a 13 so I converted this one from their kit and I'll show this one in a different video but I really like those taillights they're just awesome taillights but those are in the the boss 302 kit that uh, is out as well so I'll kind of show that in there as a teaser but um, that'll be another video for another time but we really like to know whatever happened to Plamos um, they kind of dropped off the face of the earth and uh, their page is still up but it's almost always sold out as far as some other stuff, and I haven't checked it in a while. But, um, you know, there's uh, those two, which I love putting those side by side and playing with them. So the rest of my video, I'll just be playing with these, of course. <laughs> That's just how it is. But it's just a, a great kit. I'd love to see more of these. And, they, and they, they fit together really well, other than, you know, the ride height issue a little bit. I like to lower them down just a little bit more. But the metal exhaust tips and the body and the spoiler and just some of the stuff here. Just a really good looking car. Show you some of the underside there and drop the hood. I haven't done that in a while. You know, sometimes the hoods just uh, don't want to come off for me and other times they just fall off. But uh, that's a sharp looking car. But I'd love to see more of the Shelby's or more conversions from them. And with the advancement in 3D printing and some of that stuff, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of this stuff. I figured I would show this one to you guys this weekend, see what you guys think. One of my more modern ones. They don't seem to do as well as uh, some of my older ones. But then again, you know, it's muscle cars and what gets your eye, all eye candy. But uh, thank you for tuning in, subscribing, and all your comments. I really do appreciate it. And you guys, you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next Saturday. In case you were wondering, that did clean off really well off the side. I just wiped it off. And uh, I should just do a better job cleaning these up sometimes when I'm getting the video ready. Sometimes they're cleaned up really good. Sometimes I clean them up somewhat. Maybe I should do a video on prepping and cleaning up. But, uh, you know, just clean that up a little bit better. You know, so not, not a big deal. But I just think it's kind of funny. It's like, oh, notice that in the middle of the video. And uh, just kind of rushing. And that's what I get for you know, feeling pressure to get these uh, videos done for you guys. But uh, anyway, <laughs> in case you're wondering, no big deal. Wiped right off. And uh, not even sure what it was. Probably just something that was on my finger while I was moving it around or whatnot. But, you know, that's the risk of taking them out of the case and playing with them. 
But uh, thank you, and you guys have a good weekend.